go provide the facility to facility of two different data semantics. Um, one of these data semantics is called value semantics. The other data semantic is called pointer semantics. Now what value semantics says is that uh, a piece of code is copied as it moves around your program. That every piece of code that needs to work with the data operates on its own copy of the data. The other semantic, when I use the word semantic, uh, no, I'm, I'm talking about behavior. The other semantic is pointer semantic, and pointer semantics says that we're not going to make copies of data as we move it across our program. There's just going to be one copy, and it's going to be shared by everybody. Now, there has to be advantages and disadvantages of using one over the other, and there are. And um, in the more intermediate and advanced classes, we go deep into these semantics, and there's lots of guidelines. Um, but just to keep it at a high level, when we're working with value semantics, where everybody's operating on their own copy of the data, we actually can achieve higher levels of integrity in our software. Because the majority of the bugs that we, we get in software have to do with the mutation of memory. And if everybody's isolated to their own copy, then that mutation is isolated to that one piece of code. And it's easy to, to know if something went bad and where it went bad because it's isolated to a very particular point in the code. Where when a, a, a write using a pointer goes bad, it could be very hard to know where that came from depending on how widespread a piece of data is shared across the program. So we're going to get higher levels of integrity around those, say, mutation bugs when everybody's isolated. Plus, if I have my own copy, and Eric has his own copy, and um, Lynn has her own copy, then I really couldn't care what Eric and Lynn are doing with their copy of the data. It doesn't concern me. And it does simplify our programming models. Now, there's other performance-based reasons and other technical reasons maybe why the value semantics are better. But the cost of value semantics sometimes is extra complexity in the code. And this extra complexity shows itself when there still needs to be an application level view of state. And you have to reassemble all of the copies together. or Eric, Lynn, and I would have to communicate every time we wanted to mutate the data, even though we're mutating our own copy. We would have to keep everybody's copy up to date. That's complex. And when that, start, that type of complexity starts to be introduced, having pointers makes it really easy because Lynn, Eric, and I don't have to communicate anymore. Uh, we just take t turns altering the same piece of data. Uh, we just do that properly. So the pointer semantics, what they give us is efficiency. Because it's just one piece of data. It gets to be shared. We don't have complexity around reading and writing it, per se. Uh, but we can lose integrity, because now if a piece of data is being shared widespread by lots of lots of, say, independent threads of execution, we could lose track of who's mutating it and when. And that's when the real bad, bad, bad bugs hit. So one is about, making, about allowing every piece of code to operate on its own copy. The other one is about allowing code to have shared access. And the guidelines here take me days, literally days, to filter all out. We're not going to get into right now when to use values over pointers and vice versa. Right now, I just want to teach you the mechanics of the value semantic and the point of semantics. So when we see it in code, at least you understand mechanically what we're doing. Okay.